Engineering timelines are longer than those of media scandals, which has given Honda a predicament with its all-new iTech diesel engine. The company's decision to develop a next-generation ultra-clean turbo diesel was made well before Volkswagen was caught getting its cheat on, but the finished 1.6-liter inline-4 reviewed here in the Honda Civic is reaching its target market in Europe just as demand slumps for compression ignition engines. Thanks in large part to the Dieselgate scandal. Too bad for Honda, which has been suffering in Europe for years. Sales on the continent fell to just 140,000 last year, more than 50% below the peak reached in 2007 and less than a tenth of what the brand manages in the similarly sized US market. But it's also a shame because a new engine could well be seen by historians of late air internal combustion, looking back decades from now, as representing the pinnacle of diesel technology. This is not one of those high performance diesels that have wowed us in the past. The 1.6 liter iTex power output is barely a quarter that of the triple boosted V8 TDI fitted to the Audi SQ7 and the diesel Bentley Bentca an engine that has been heralded as another pinnacle of the compression ignition craft. In the Eurospec Civic hatchback, the iTex headline figures are 118 horsepower and 221 pounds to foot of torque, with Honda claiming a 9.8 second sprint from 0 to 62 miles per hour and a 125 mile per hour top speed. The only gasoline Euro spec Civic that the iTech has a chance of beating in a stoplight showdown is the base turbocharged 1.0 liter 3 cylinder. Yes, that is a thing. For reference, the 2.2 liter ID turbo diesel that Honda considered selling in the United States, and which we tested, a decade ago produced a superior 138 horsepower and 251 pounds to foot of torque. But the new engine isn't about firepower, instead, focusing on efficiency and emissions. And on those measures, it is almost unbeatable. Europe's net fuel economy figures are notoriously optimistic, so the Civic Hitech's official figure of 67 miles per gallon combined, when converted to US gallons, is best seen as a means of comparison with other cars rather than an indicator of real world performance. That number is identical to the one Toyota claims for the 2018 Prius, and it does make the Civic one of the most efficient cars available in Europe. More impressive is that the Civic is already able to pass the stringent new Euro 6 D10 emissions standard, a year ahead of its implementation. That standard uses real-world testing to ensure emissions of NOx and particulates don't go above 2.1 times the permitted laboratory values during everyday use. For reference, a report from 2015 suggested that some diesels emit up to 14 times their official NOx levels out on the road. Honda has managed to achieve this target without the added cost or complexity of a urea injection system. Instead, the iTech gets a close coupled NOx storage catalyst and a diesel particulate filter in the exhaust. These capture undesirable particulates and burn them off using forced regeneration through added fuel if the exhaust temperature isn't sufficient. The new engine also has had its efficiency boosted with the use of steel pistons rather than aluminum to improve heat dispersion, a low friction timing chain, a high efficiency variable geometry turbocharger, and smoother cylinder bores thanks to two-stage honing. The die-cast aluminum block has been designed to be stiffer than the previous generation engine, because it moves the resonances to lower frequencies and reduces noise by acclaimed 3 decibels at 2000 revolutions per minute. The reality is an end climax, but a good one. From the driver's seat, the Civic i Tech just feels like an exceptionally refined diesel. The only significant evidence of its lack of spark plugs is the narrow power band. There's limited enthusiasm and noticeable turbo lag below 2000 revolutions per minute, with the engine starting to feel tight above 4000 revolutions per minute. But within its mid-range, the engine pulls happily even with little throttle. 
A six-speed Manuel gearbox is the only transmission choice. European buyers of budget diesels don't object to shifting their own gears, with a nicely weighted clutch and an accurate shifter making it easy to achieve smooth progress. Dot refinement is the iTech's most impressive quality, especially given the challenge of not standing out in the already quiet Civic. At idle, it's fractionally louder than its gasoline siblings, and it is possible to feel small amounts of telltale diesel vibration through the steering wheel and the gear shift. But once the car is moving, the engine doesn't seem to be louder than any gasoline fuel Civic power plant, nor does it sound coarse when nipped to the 4,900 revolution per minute limiter. The rest of the driving experience feels predictably close to that of the regular Civic, with the same light but accurate steering, well damped ride, and respectable but unexceptional grip levels. It's no diesel hot hatch, as the iTech feels markedly less enthusiastic than the 1.5D Civic. Despite a fatter torque curve, at least below 4,000 revolutions per minute. But the Civic easily kept up with Italian traffic on our drive route near Rome, with a free flowing stretch of the Autostrada freeway confirming that it will sit happily at an indicated 90 miles per hour without breaking a sweat. We didn't drive far enough to run our own fuel economy numbers, but after 60 miles the test car's trip computer reported 45 miles per gallon. Given our rapid progress, that probably represents a worst case scenario. There is little chance that Honda will sell its new engine anywhere outside Europe. Company executives admit that it likely will be the last diesel it will develop. Diesel still made up 45% of European passenger car sales last year, but that percentage is falling rapidly and is disproportionately made up of cars bigger than the city. Within a technology generation, the case for spending the money necessary to develop another all-new diesel for a minority player like the Civic will almost certainly be gone. But it is fitting for such an engineering-led company that, despite its modest output, this little diesel should be remembered as one of the pinnacles of its genre.